Everybody here seems more than willing to, to end fishing. Red snapper is overfished and undergoing overfishing and Congress has mandated that that has to end. Unfortunately, red snapper have dwindled to about 3% of their historic size and fishing rates are seven times higher than what scientists have said is sustainable. There's going to be a lot of people that are concerned about how to make their boat payments, how to pay their bills, what they're going to do if they can't go fishing. It's a little bit misleading when they say we're only closing this small area. It's a vast area of ocean and it is all of the area that we fish. The red snapper is a species unique to North America. Unfortunately, their numbers have dwindled dramatically over the past several decades, and population levels were deemed unsustainable at current fishing levels. The Fisheries Management Council was forced to take immediate action in developing a recovery plan for the species, and their future now lies in the hands of the scientists. Just off the coast of Georgia, scientists are conducting research at Gray's Reef National Marine Sanctuary in hopes to better understand this threatened species. The, the work that we're doing at Gray's Reef this week and next week is, uh, consists of a couple of different things. We're tagging these uh, red snapper and groupers with acoustic tags that help us determine their movements but we also estimate population size by doing fish count. So we're um, looking at the abundance of these different species of fish in relation to the different kinds of habitats at Gray's Reef. And so those data, particularly data on abundance and changes in abundance over time, we supply to the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council, which uses a number of different measures of abundance, including the commercial catch and recreational catch and fishery independent surveys like we do at Gray's Reef to estimate the abundance of red snapper and grouper and other species and to see if that's changing over time, to see if the regulations are improving um, the population levels or if additional regulations might be needed. This type of research can prove very challenging for scientists. These species often reside 100 feet below the surface and can live to be over 50 years old. When captured, the fish experience severe decompression as they are rapidly brought to the surface. The scientists must work quickly in alleviating that pressure. All right. We let the fish recover from the catching and uh, degassing and when they appear to be behaving normally and swimming normally in the tanks, then we'll, we'll do uh, a surgery on them, where, whereby we put a small incision in their abdomen and insert the tag, which is about a half a centimeter in diameter by two centimeters long, insert it, and then we sew that incision up with a couple of stitches, and then let the fish recover from that for 24 hours before we release them in, into the water. The clock is ticking, and every second could be the difference between life and death. When the fish recovers from surgery, scientists release it at the same location it was captured. On the east coast here though is a, a proposed closure of the snapper grouper fishery in deep water and um, that will close a significant part of the continental shelf to fishing in order to restore stocks of red snapper. 
The results of this research may have a profound impact on how the Fisheries Management Council develops a recovery plan for the red snapper. The fate of the snapper will be decided in Orlando, Florida. This meeting will prove to be a contentious scene for the fishermen and scientists involved. Fishermen don't agree in many cases with the stock assessment results. They question that, especially with red snapper. Amendment 17A, with the preferred option of large areas closed to bottom fishing for snapper and grouper species, will destroy fishing businesses, both commercial and recreational, permanently. And while we fully support ending overfishing to restore abundance, we do not believe that closing the huge areas of the ocean to all recreational fishing was what Congress had in mind. It's large area closures. It's huge social economic impact. I guess I'm going to have to start looking for another line of work. We, the recreational fishermen, do not believe in misguided information. That's called peffery. Opinion, not proven fact. Uh, scientists said you're, that in the southeast for maybe 30, 40 years have been catching too many red snapper and it's done uh, some pretty unfortunate things to the size and the health of the population. 40 years of overfishing drove the red snapper population to dangerously low levels. Even more alarming is that very few of those fish are older than five years of age. And that we need to get people fishing as soon as possible and that means it's the harshest measures up front. We need to pay for it now. We have to consider the future of these fish and, uh, and how we can maintain populations of these fish, not just for the market and not just for recreation, but because it's important to have wild natural systems where fish are maintained. So you're looking at, at ending overfishing, rebuilding overfished stocks, and then maintaining those stocks in a, in a way that, that creates a sustainable fishery for both commercial and recreational fishermen. After hearing from recreational fishermen, environmental organizations, and scientists, the South Atlantic Fisheries Management Council must make an important decision about the red snapper ban. If council members vote yes, bottom water fishing from South Georgia to northeastern Florida will be banned, shutting down nearly 5,000 square miles of the South Atlantic. North Carolina? Yes. Mr. Boyles? Yes. Mr. Heyman? Yes. Mr. Harding? No. Ms. Merritt? No. Mr. Swatson? <laughs> no. Mr. Phillips? No. Mr. Robson? Yes. Dr. Crabtree? Yes. Mr. Duffin? Yes. Mr. Geiger? Yes. Chairman Harris? Yes. And Chairman Curran? Yes. The motion passes by 9 to 4. I think the South Atlantic Council deserves credit for taking an important step today towards putting Red Snapper on the road to recovery. It's going to eliminate a fishery that I've been involved with for, in, with, for 30 years, my whole life. How can fishermen and environmentalists find a balance in managing the resources? The answer may lie in the historic city of Charleston, South Carolina. Sustainable seafood is, is making sure we have enough seafood to keep eating more and make sure our oceans are healthy enough to keep producing seafood for us. We're primarily a restaurant associated organization, so we work primarily with chefs and when they join our program, they have to commit to not serve orange ruffy, Chilean sea bass, and imported shark as three of the species that overall are really not sustainable. Uh, we also have a menu assessment program that allows them to delve a little further into sustainability and also gives them an opportunity to upgrade, upgrade to what we call a gold or a platinum status. Uh, what the menu assessment is, this whole process, is they give me their menu and give me all their sourcing information, so where their product is actually coming from, the country of origin. 
and I do a sustainability assessment on each individual product, and then all the products get averaged for an overall score. And if their menu scores high enough, they're upgraded to gold or platinum, and we promote them as such. So their customers know that they are going to greater lengths for sustainability and trying to learn more about sustainable seafood. Fishing and getting your fish locally, I think, is enormous and is great. And I think that's what most we should almost do. Um, so you're actually not overfishing and you're really fishing what you need and you have a better quality product. One person in Charleston has turned this idea into a reality. Fisherman Mark Marhefka brings his local fresh catch straight from his boat hand delivering it to the finest restaurants of Charleston each week. Chefs are even given the opportunity to hand select their fish, putting together specials for their menu. By committing to serve sustainable seafood, the restaurants of Charleston are setting a new standard in culinary excellence. So if we can teach those chefs to make good environmental choices, then all their customers are eating sustainable seafood, whether the customer knows it, whether the customer even cares it or not. We come here from the boat, we literally bring him in, and then we put him in the ice, directly on the ice. We slice our fish, cut it, get it out. Um, and then literally the fish goes in the, in the saute pan and get cooked. If you think about most restaurants, when you order fish, you order fish from the seafood company. The seafood company buys the fish from a broker. The broker buys the seafood from a captain. So your fish is already touched about three or four hands before it gets to you. A customer will come and say, oh, well, you don't sell sea and sea it's such a great fish. It's like, yeah, it's not sustainable. So we don't. Um, and that's, that's the kind of thing that Megan's help. And Megan helped me, uh, make us meet the people, you know. She contact, she connect us with Mark Mafelka. She connects us with the local shrimpers. It takes one chef to start it for every other chef to follow up and go in that same direction. You know, it, and it help educating the people about it. And voila! <laughs> The key is really making the right choices for the menu, serving sustainable seafood. These restaurants, a huge part of their business is serving seafood. If they want to keep doing that in five years, in 10 years, they need to support the fishermen who are fishing sustainably now because they're the ones who are going to be around in the future harvesting that same seafood. Next for me is I don't know. You know, uh, I have a strong faith in God and I know he's going to take care of me. He always has, so if this door shuts, another one will open. You know, I think there's probably a better way to, to manage all of these various components of how we treat the ocean, how we extract, what we put in, and really try to account for what we don't know. <laughs>